Julia, and welcome back to Race to Win, the sailing podcast where we use 3D replays of actual races to discuss tactics, rules, and more. Successful sailors have a lot of weapons in their tactical arsenal that they're going to use when they're battling it out with their competition. Today, I'm going to go over one of those more advanced weapons, which is the Lee Bow Maneuver. If you take a look at our wind shadow graphic here, you can see this large area, which indicates the wind shadow, and then this smaller area near the bow, which is the Lee Bow Zone. So if a boat gets into this lee bow zone here, they're going to have the advantage. Basically, it's just another area of disturbed air created when you're sailing. If you can get close enough to someone to lee bow them and get into this zone, the wind coming over your sails and your wake both affect that boat. It's going to slow them down and they're slowly going to start to fall back and you're going to appear to escape from underneath them. So here you can see in this graphic, the wind sort of bends off of your sails and it just really creates more disturbed air. In order for this to work, you need to tack extremely close to the person that you're lee bowing and you need to be almost completely clear ahead. The farther ahead and closer you are, the faster this will work to sort of flush away the competition. If you're considering lee bowing someone in a crossing situation, you should first look at your relative positions. If you're not going to cross clear ahead, you're going to struggle to be far enough ahead of the boat when you tack. So if you are coming across right at midships, by the time you complete your tack, you're going to be behind them and you're just going to get blanketed and run over. So if your only option is to duck, you're going to be too far behind. You need to just duck. If it looks like you can cross clear ahead, that's when you can think about that lee bow. We'll take a look at the top view. You can see both boats closing 36 is on port tack boat one is on starboard tack and look just how far ahead they are eight meters um, but they're gonna tack almost right when they would be crossing and end up just underneath boat one and now you can see they are he is well in the other boat's lee bow zone which is again this green circle we'll zoom in a little bit so that you can get a better look so they lost six meters in that tack. Remember, they were eight meters ahead. So think about that. You need to be pretty far ahead and able to get into this position. And this is classic lee bow position. Lee bowing someone isn't going to provide instant gratification. It's important once you get in that position not to pinch. You need to keep up your speed in order to start flushing them back. Look, there he goes, falling back a little bit. Here comes somebody else. He's just not going to get involved in this whole mess. Whoosh, he's going to duck them and go on by. And it looks like our guy's probably starting to get sick of this. It's been about a minute now, and he's really starting to feel those effects. He's slowing down. And he is going to be forced to tack away. Lee bowing can be something you want to do depending on your overall tactical strategy. You need to keep the big picture in mind. So this guy is on port tack here. And we're having a crossing situation with boat 26. He is able to cross clear ahead, but he sees an opportunity to take the lee bow. So he is going to flop over onto port tack. Again, look how far ahead he is. And he does a pretty good tack. And now... He is right in that lee bow zone of boat 26, and he is going to be able to just wash that guy away. Um, remember, always keep the big picture in mind. It may not be to your advantage to lee bow somebody because it is a risky maneuver. In this case, he's got him right where he wants him, and we'll just jump forward a bit here. You can see he's starting to slow down, starting to fall behind. Remember, it takes about a minute for this to work, so it's important not to pinch while this is happening and slow yourself down. Just be patient. Eventually the other boat is going to feel the effects and take his leave of you. Now this is a really interesting example of how to use a lee bow maneuver to sort of clear the path at the start as you will. So this is the green starting box here in the 3D replay and you can see the starting line out in front where the water changes color back to blue and you can see the pacer line creeping up here behind. When that pacer line gets to the starting line it'll be time to start. Now we're looking at boats 8 and 21. They're all a little bit early as you can see so they're sort of stopping here at the starting line going really quite slow. Now, so here we are just a few seconds before the start and eight is gonna come down and use that burst of speed to get up there on 21's hip and just trap her right in that lee bow position for a start in clear air. It was probably really her only choice. And by doing that, that she basically created a lane for herself. And although they're quite close together right now, boom, they just started. 
Um, you can see 21 is just falling behind and falling behind. It did not take long for that Lee Bao with that burst of speed and how close eight was able to get to just eat up 21. And she's just sitting there. Now she's just being gassed in the dirty air and has no choice but to tack away. So remember, if you're going to Lee Bao somebody, make sure that you can make it. Don't try to Lee Bao someone if you're not going to be able to cross clear ahead. If someone Lee Bao's you, really the only defense is to tack away. If it looks like they're not doing it right, you can try sailing down a little bit, get up some speed, and you won't lose that much if you then you need to use that speed to tack away. But don't just sit there and let them gas you. You are being Lee Bao'd and you need to get out of there. And maybe most importantly, when you do manage to sort of roll someone from underneath with this Lee Bao tactic, try to keep that smirk off your face because you might be next. See you next time. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can find more on our website, www.racecues.com slash podcast, or search for Race Cues on iTunes and click subscribe. 